So before I introduce um, company cam, um, I want to um, ask a quick question about who's actually on the call. So mo some of you guys are a contractor or the business owner, you're a salesperson or an office administrator. So we're gonna do a quick poll. And so you can just update um, on your screen which best describes you. Awesome, and the tallies are coming in. You can just pop in there and put, put the submit button. And we are almost to 100% of those who are on the call have voted. Are you a contractor, a salesperson, an office administrator? What best describes you? One person said, I'm everything, everything to my business. I love it. Awesome. And we will close the poll in about two seconds. So if you have not um, updated that, please do. Helps us to get an idea of who's on the call and how best to serve you during this webinar. Awesome. Great. And we're going to close that poll and share out the results. So awesome. So most of you are the business owner. You're coming to um, this webinar and, you know, you are really interested in finding out the process of job site documentation and figuring out some best practices. Um, and then so some of you are actually on in the field, which in the sales, and some of you are the administrator. And so we're gonna be able to um, touch on all three of those um, points during this webinar. So exciting stuff, Jeff. Awesome. All right, so back to, just gonna share my screen out one more time. Awesome. So today, what are we gonna talk about today? So today's webinar is covering job site documentation. We're gonna talk about all of those photos that you are taking, that your sales team are, is taking, that the estimates team is taking when you guys go out. And we're gonna talk about what the current process is, what you, what you need to consider when you're going out in terms of documenting these jobs. And then those, those couple of mistakes that we we have when you're submitting to an insurance, we're going to cover what those mistakes are and ways to avoid those. And then finally, we're going to do um, we're lucky enough to have Jeff on the line, who's going to walk through the presentation with us. But also, he's going to give us a demo of Company Cam. And Atlas has recently um, partnered with Company Cam. If you come to one of our many roadshows that are coming up this year, you'll be able to talk to one of the company cam reps, but we believe that company cam is offering a lot of value to contractors as it pertains to actually um, being able to take those photos and have them work for you to work for your business and not just have 50 photos, hundreds of hundreds of photos for some of you on your phone, but to actually use that and be able to leverage those photos on social media, leverage that within your business and leverage it most importantly within an insurance setting to get paid. So um, Jeff um, is a business development manager at Company Cam. He traded in um, the corporate world for the startup world and joining Cam Company Cam in 2017. He has a background in sales and project management. He grew up with his dad general contracting business where he used to take photos of their company's work on disposable cameras and print them off and fill shoe boxes and photo albums. Um, so now he gets to show contractors a much better way to document their jobs. And i um, really excited to have you on, Jeff, and to share some best practices um, with um, our team and um, of contractors. And um, at, for those of you that are on the call, again, just as a way of protocol, if you have um, any questions during this webinar, feel free to enter them into the chat box. And um, if you like something that you hear, you know, and you're on your mobile phone or your tablet, feel free to give us a couple of hearts. We always like that and like to know that you're engaged and that you're listening. And um, we'll be um, keeping the conversation. So without further ado, Jeff, you want to take it away? Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, um, and thanks, everybody, for joining. Hopefully this is a, a relevant topic for you all. And, and hopefully we can add some value to that. I know that you're taking time away from making money today. Uh, but hopefully we can kind of uh, give you some some tools to continue doing that effectively um, here even after this this webinar. 
Uh, let me make sure, uh, Tiara, that uh, if, if my screen is showing here. All right, perfect. Let me jump into that and give me a confirmation. Yes, we can see it. All right, so I'm on the Y Take Photo slide right now. Everything yes. good to go there. Perfect. So, um, so we're going to cover a. a I'm, I'm going to cover a, a couple of quick topics. So one is basically necessary photos. Why we're taking photos. I'm. I'm just going to assume. I'm going to come into this conversation assuming that everybody on this call is already taking photos of your work. Um, if for some reason you're not, um, I, I. I would certainly encourage that, and I'll kind of give you some. Some. Some reasons why. So I'll kind of move through this uh, at a swift clip, but. Um, Tiara, I don't have uh, uh, visibility to the chat, so if you can let me know if there's any questions that you want me to pause for, uh, I'll just kind of yep. let you let you drive that. So, um, so as as Tiara mentioned, first and foremost, I, I I grew up in a contractor's household. Our house was always the last thing to get remodeled. We did dishes in the bathtub because we, you know, all the subs that that my stepdad hired as a general contractor, they're always out doing everybody else's job. It's kind of like the the story of the the cobbler's kids always have the worst shoes kind of thing. Like we were always the last house to get done. So, uh, but I loved it. I love seeing the evolution of going from what it was to what it could become. Um, whether that's a small, just quick bathroom remodel to, you know, a full blown kitchen. So, uh, and then in college, uh, actually building houses was a blast too. And I, I really did. I'm kind of dating myself. Um, not sure of the, uh, demographic on this call but I used to keep a, a disposable camera in my tool uh, tool belt and just pop pictures as we went and I would uh, have those printed off at Walgreens and and literally put them in a shoebox or into an album so um, I love doing it uh, but this is just uh, just gonna be way more different uh, 20 years ago it was still the same reason that we were taking photos um, but but now the way that we can do that has changed significantly with technology. So um, so first and foremost, why even take photos? Uh, again, I, I think I'm probably preaching the choir here, but I'm just going to run through these things just to kind of as reminders of why you might be doing it. Maybe there's some things that you used to do it for that maybe you, you kind of moved away from, but maybe as a reminder to come back to those things. So having visibility into every job. So taking photos, uh, a lot of people that we talk to, of course, are texting photos, emailing photos, downloading them. Um, you got 150, 200 pictures on your on your phone, but as soon as you get those, you have visibility into every job. You have added accountability of knowing that your crews out in the field are actually, you know, doing what they said that they they would do. Um, the, regardless of the size of your crew, whether you're you're a one man show or whether you got you know 40 trucks out there doing stuff right now, um, so it does provide added accountability. Lets you. Um, whether you're the office administrator or, or project manager or, or the owner, um, lets you have kind of insight into what's going on. Resolving disputes is something we're going to talk about. So, you know, let's say that, uh, you know, a customer, uh, whether it's a customer, another subcontractor or something like that says, hey, you, you know, this wasn't done or this wasn't done. You cracked my driveway with your dumpster. Well, if you took a picture beforehand and you can show that that picture was before you even showed up, you can resolve that dispute. Again, you don't want to get into, none of us want to be in, in you know, defense mode with our customers, but at the same time, if you can set their mind at ease with a photo that says, hey, you know what, this wasn't us, you can kind of restore some credibility and trust to that relationship. And that just leads into maintaining the relationships. So, um, you know, I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's a town of 280,000 people. It's very small feeling in that I run into people I know everywhere. If I have am a contractor and I get a bad name in this city, I might as well just move um, because um, I'm not gonna like it's you, your name is everything. You see your people see your trucks, they see your signs and yards, they see the work that you're doing, and, and they're probably seeing some of your social media. And then the last one, CYA. We want to cover our backsides here. So um, you know if if there's something that you can document with photos and prove that it was a certain way, either that you it was like that before you started or that you finished it and you did it right. Um, that's also a great reason that you would want to take photos. So again, I'm assuming that everybody on here at least has some sense of this, but uh, just wanted to touch on those few things really quick before we dive into some of the other content. The current process. So as I mentioned, what are we doing right now? How do you do it? Um, most people that we talk to, this might be you. Um, how do you take photos? What do you are you taking photos? Absolutely. How do you organize those? Well, we got you know, 17 guys that, that text them to me and I send them to our project manager, our office manager, and 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 they spend hours a week sorting them out and trying to, you know, 
put them in the right folders and you know that's that's necessary but a few things that that are hiccups to that or that you're relying on the people actually taking the photos from their phone and sending them to you or coming to the office and downloading them or uploading them to your computer but then you've got this whole conglomeration of photos including a, a couple pictures of Johnny from his you know high school or, or his uh, you know <laughs> elementary play that he was in that somehow got mixed into there so you just kind of have like a jumbled mess of, of photos um, and then it's hard to even go back and find them so if you had an issue at you know, one, two, three Main Street, how do I go back and even pull up the photos that were taken there? So that's something that um, is is sometimes uh, a hindrance to really being able to operate your business efficiently. It takes you time. Everybody here knows that time costs money. And so how do I get my job done, get things resolved and move on to the other parts of my life that I'm really just supporting with my job? So um, and then having that real time access, if they're in a shoebox or they're in a photo album, which I'm maybe you're not using anymore, but but if you do have them on a, a bunch of different phones across your company, it's really hard to know exactly what's taken. Maybe I take, you know, 60 photos today at a job that I'm working on, but I'm not going to be back in the office until Thursday and you don't really want me texting you 60 photos. So you don't really have those photos the second that I'm out there working on that particular job. So those are some of the caveats to, you know, we all understand the importance of taking photos, but the current process, it's, it's clunky, um, but, but there, are some, there are some options out there, and, and there's options even beyond company cam, but we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Um, I asked, you know, Tiara, kind of what, what the audience is for today. Of course, being in, you know, with, with a roofing, uh, you know, supplier and, you know, having people out there on roofs, I know that not everybody is necessarily that's on this call that's, you know, the contractor, maybe you're not doing roofs exclusively. Maybe you're doing other stuff. These things still pertain to you. So there's a few things just if you're if you just have people out in the field and they're taking photos, but you're not really sure what, you know, how to really direct them. You just know that photos are important, but you don't really have a process for it or a really, uh, a, you know, conclusive kind of, hey, you've got to take at least these five photos every single time that you're on a job. I'm going to walk you through that right now. So. Um, so five photos every contractor must take. Um, so first and foremost, you want to take photos of signs of failure, any damage. Uh, these are pretty extreme examples, but even if it's just curling shingles, anything, just even just the befores. So like when you go out to a job, a lot of you are taking pictures. If you're on the sales or estimating side of things, you might be some of the first people there at a job uh, to provide that estimate. If you're, you know, an owner operator, you might be out meeting with the customers yourself. Take some preliminary survey photos. You're, you're probably doing this again, but um, just a reminder that you want to capture these. So, um, you know, whether you're restoring a roof that's, you know, battered by hailstorm or walking into a bathroom remodel, there should be proper photo documentation of that. So this is really going to provide clarity to your existing customers, to your potential customers of the problems that you can solve. I think another thing to add here, Jeff, is that a, a lot of customers <coughs> haven't gone on their roofs or may not have exactly. seen on their roof. And yeah. so to take preliminary photos of actually what's on their roof, a blistering shingle, shingles that mm -hmm. are, you know, that have gone off or are missing, all of that kind, all of those are really important to be able to take photos to actually show the homeowner when once you get in there and are quoting out this is what the next steps are what they may need that's going to be really important right yeah absolutely great point thanks for interjecting that i appreciate that i think that's a a marvelous point to make mm -hmm. definitely um the the process you know i i don't get on roofs i don't i don't get on them anytime i don't have to um building houses sawdust on plywood gravity all those things don't work well for me. I'm built like a linebacker, not a gazelle. Um, I, I go straight to the ground when I when I hit my backside on a roof. So I don't like it. I've <laughs> It's happened too many times. I love doing the stuff on the ground, but you know what? It, it has to happen. So I will totally uh, play the wimp card when it comes to, to actually getting on uh, on a roof. So uh, again, mentioning that I'd spent my teenage years, you know, in my stepdad's kitchen and bathroom modeling company in Southern California watching you know, houses go from simple framing to you know total total guts remodels 
there was something to me that I just love that tangible aspect of watching the construction of these homes. So for you, maybe there's some of you on the phone that this is your first year um, getting in the game of contracting. Maybe you've been doing this for 35 years. Um, maybe it doesn't seem as magical to you anymore because it's just become commonplace. So, um, so often you might arrive at a job site, you do your work when the job finishes, there's no documentation, you get your check, you go on and like, I understand, like I get it. Like you're, you're trying to cut any time out of your, out of your day that you can. There's no photo documentation of the process, but remember that through the photos, you can capture that process and really you can tell your audience. So if it's somebody that's following you on Instagram or Facebook or watching your, you know, checking your website, um, or even for your customers, this will tell your, your, your audience, whoever that may be, a story of how you actually build or how you actually do your, your work. So whether your, your client's a homeowner or a business, having photos of that entire process just really develops trust and credibility that shows that you are standing behind your work. Another thing that is probably one of the most overlooked, your people. So, um, you know, what separates you from the other contractor down the road? So depending on your market, maybe you're in a huge, you know, Atlanta, or maybe you're in um, a, a place smaller than Lincoln. Um, you know, what sets you apart? So, um, you know, your work and your employees. So the work that you're doing. So when the people in our communities deliver, uh, in our companies, in our communities to you know deliver an experience that's remarkable like customers usually reciprocate that by sharing out their experience so if you put you know a remodel of their house or or their roof on your website or on your instagram and you share that to them they're probably going to repost that so you know if you're striving uh to be a market leader or maybe you already are a market leader you should be putting these you know these employees on display your your the people that are working for you that set you apart from the other guy um and then just you know keeping in mind that sometimes it's just it just gives now these are pretty ambiguous photos we didn't we didn't want to put anybody's faces right on here of, of any of the the projects but these are these are some great you know just showing the the work being done and maybe even uh, some pictures of the guys or or your team um you know after a project is done standing in front of it and post it um that can be cool too Craftsmanship is huge. So um, <laughs> we all know <laughs> that there are the fly-by nights out there that just don't, you know, they, they just they're not doing good work. They're trying to turn a buck. They're showing up, you know, they're, you know, kind of just doing things just to kind of get moved on. And and those those are the companies. Those are the those are the operations that that give the rest of you a bad name. And uh, this can really uh, sets you apart this can say hey look like i know that you got burned by you know xyz company the last time a storm hit or the last time you had something done but here's here's some work of things that i've done in your area here's some here's how we do our work here's the process here's how we lay it out you can see that we're you know installing shingles as per the you know the guidelines for for successful installation and to make sure that they you know keep keep their warranty you can show your guys just operating a clean job site that's organized and it's you know doesn't have a bunch of safety hazards it just shows that you've got your stuff together and that is going to be something that is going to definitely set you apart from uh from the next guy so and then last we're going to just jump into this one the after we talked about you know that's showing the damage the signs of failure that was the first photo that we want to take but we want to show the after so we want to show what does this look like when it's all said and done um, having that before and after, like if you have nothing but those two photos, you can tell a really compelling story just with those two photos of where it was and where it is now. And again, everybody, you know, let's say that you're in a house or on a roof or whatever. And sometimes those jobs might be an afternoon and sometimes those jobs might be a month. Um, kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, it's easy for the, the customer to forget what it used to look like. So having that, the, the initial photos, and then being able to show them, hey, here's what it looks like now. And more often than not, you're gonna get people whose jaws are dropping, like, oh man, I totally forgot about that. So, you know, we don't need to be, have it drilled into our minds of, of what's happening. They're writing a check, and what better than right before a customer, you know, completes their, their, their final payment to you, than just making them feel good about it. 
um, the fact that they're actually uh, paying you because of the work that you can show them that you just did. So uh, before I move on, um, any questions on the five photos that a contractor must take we talked about? CR, I'll let you kind of let me know if, if there's anything coming through yep. there. If, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to type it into the chat box. Um, <coughs> doesn't look like anything's coming in. Right. Well, I will try to make... keep moving through at a clip that uh, leaves us some time at the end. Again, if I if I'm maybe going too fast or I need to slow down, please let me know that. But I just want to make sure that um, we're offering relevant content and respectful of time at the same at the same time. So, um, yeah. so all right. So costly mistakes when submitting photos to insurance carriers. So, um, you know, this is something that if you're doing anything with roofs, you're probably in this game. You're 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 having to deal with this. I would say that it's probably not everybody's favorite thing to do, um, but you know that a picture is worth a thousand words, but in your job, in your world, it can be worth a thousand or tens of thousands of dollars. So taking the right photos the first time is going to save you a big headache um, of not having to return multiple times a projects in progress. And so it's also going to prevent delays, um, you know, on the back end of the job. And so, you know, when an insurance company estimates a loss, again, I'm not pulling back the curtain here, everybody knows this, they have an interest in estimating it as low as possible. That's that's their job. And so they're not likely to necessarily give you more money or give a customer more money unless there's evidence that they're required to do so. So, um, you know, being able to document that and just kind of being a second set of eyes and, and being able to, to effectively document that, that's where it can come in big for you. It can, it can help uh, get that claim approved and and get you paid so that you can move on to the next one and 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 go get that next customer and and make them happy. So one of the first things that that um, one of the first mistakes and this is just kind of um, one of my my colleagues he works um, a lot with some public adjusters and just getting some input from them. But um, first mistake is just not taking enough photos. So if I take these photos right here. Um, you know, adjusters require that vis visual proof. So you want to paint a full picture. You want to basically show them what they missed. Um, it avoids arguments about what should be paid out. You can see their pick, their records. You can see your records. You can just point some things out. But being able to, you know, just take, not not just taking two photos, but maybe taking, you know, plenty of photos to be able to to really show that uh, that big picture. So, you know, top left here, this roof. Like if I take that photo. I don't have any context there. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know what the, the adjuster might have missed. I'm not saying that you don't want to take that photo, but you want to take some additional photos too. So um, one thing that's really helpful is showing the big picture. So if you're not showing the big picture, that's mistake number two. Again, the adjusters require visual proof um, to, to be able to really bolster your case for needing to get that supplement you know, cost. Um, context is huge. So showing the size of an area, showing the materials, showing issues beyond what they might have cited. Um, now they might have a, a similar photo to yours, but yours might be better. It might show a little bit more of something that they might have missed um, and just really be able to uh, kind of clarify that. So right now, um, if I ask you like how many units is this building, how many floors is this building, anything like that, um, it's really hard to tell from this photo. Um, that's okay, uh, but what I it, it can take uh, be be a really simple um, solution just to take this photo, but then also to take a step back. So when I take a step back, that yellow highlighted area is now what what the previous photo was of. Excuse me, I've got a cough. One moment. <coughs> Sorry about that. Your time. I appreciate it. One sec. So anyway, here is as we've got this this photo. Now you've got the context of, of of everything that that I'm looking at. So you can now see that you know this is a two story. So if I need to do something up up top there, if I need to that cornice return strip goes all the way to the end, like I can see more of what I'm looking at. So if you need to you know charge for you know the second floor, uh, second story, if you need to charge for maybe you know the the pitch of the roof, like anything like that. So taking those 
those photos that are closer that really zoom in on what you're looking at, those are absolutely essential. But in addition to that, having the context of what you're actually looking at so that people can, you know, whoever it is that you're sharing this out to, adjusters or whatnot, they can quickly see like, oh, okay, I see, I see the bigger picture here. And so it just Jeff, gives them the context. Yeah. About, you have two questions about that, sorry. Um, the first one is in, in the photo here where you have the big picture shown, that's very helpful. Is the um, mark, how do you mark out the um, indications like with the yellow box and the text yeah. box that you have there? And then the second question is, um, is this like, you know, is it helpful when taking photos to use your drone, to have a drone? Oh, okay, perfect. So the first question, I'll take that one. So is the photo here, like how do you annotate that? How do you draw that? So what I did here is I just, I simply took a screenshot of this on my computer. And then if you have, I have an iPhone, I'm guessing Android may have a similar function, but um, so on my computer, I can, I can go into edit mode and I can add that, that yellow box on there, which is what I did for this. Um, if I take a photo on my iPhone and I go into edit, um, I also have the option to to put a rectangle or a circle or an arrow on there. Um, and mm -hmm. I can then save that to the photo as well. So that is that is helpful. Um, the cornice return strip annotation there, that's actually something that's taken through company cam, but I, you can, I could do that with my iPhone. I could just add an arrow and then I could add text to it. It would take two separate steps. Um, so these functions are, are available to you probably on just about any device that you're running um, if you're not sure how it works on your specific device you can just maybe even google like how do i um, add a you know a square to a photo or something like that um, that's really all i did on here it was pretty simple so like what i did here is nothing company cam specific um, that cornice return strip note is from uh is from company cam but you can do that on an iPhone as well. It's just it just takes a an extra step or two. So yeah, that's a that's a great great question. So you can you can usually call things out in your photos um, right from your smartphone or tablet. Okay. Um, and you may get into this later on in the pre, in the demo <laughs> side, but you have a, yeah. some questions about you know integrating a drone photos yeah. to get the complete. Photos yeah. On the roof as well. So yeah. So the question is, it helpful to, to use a drone? I would say absolutely. If you have the means for that, it gives you just even even more more context. Now, there's probably a point of diminishing return, kind of depending on what you're actually doing. But yeah, as far as uh, being able to take video or anything like that with with your drone, if you have the capacity to do that, I don't see any. I, I think that can only help you um, help sure. your case, uh, both for insurance and just for for showing off your work. Absolutely. One so, contractor says that he uses drones a lot um, to take the complete pics of the entire roof, which I, I think yeah. is a great idea as well. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And so, um, from from kind of what we do, the 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 feature that we offer with Company Cam, a lot of this is just it's your people on the jobs taking the taking the photos from the view that they're at. But absolutely, there is there's certainly a a, a time and place for drone footage, and um, that's that's something that if, if you have the, the means to employ that and, and definitely a need to employ that from a business standpoint, absolutely go for that. Great question though. Great. So um, the, the third mistake, so the first mistake that we've got is not taking enough photos. Second mistake is not showing the big picture. Now the last mistake is something that some people might think contradicts the first mistake of not taking enough photos, but it's attaching too many photos. So you want to be concise. Everybody wants to, you know, if, if, if I send you an email that's got this many photos in it, you've got, let's see, eight across five, so there's 40 photos on this slide. If I send you 40 photos and you have to click in every one of those, you're going to be cussing my name <laughs> up and down the street. Like if, if I'm not actually showing you what you need to see. So submitting yeah. too many photos and, and keep in mind if you're doing um, work in an area where it's been affected by hail or or other you know natural disasters. Um, these adjusters are getting tons and tons and tons of claims. That's all they're doing for for you know the entire season. So you don't want to slow down your adjuster. Um, creating good rapport with your adjuster. So um, you want to have your adjusters see 
your company name hit their inbox or, or you know work a claim that they know that you put together and say I got this one I'm gonna start with this one because I know that this 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 company they, they have their stuff together and, uh, and and I'm just gonna work through this because I know that it's gonna be a, a smaller amount of my mental energy to get through this so again don't slow them down create good rapport but you want to also balance that by giving them what they need so sure. would, like take plenty of photos show the big picture and then when it comes to that, maybe you have your photos. Maybe you maybe you maybe you take a ton of photos. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But attaching too many photos with your estimate, show them, you know, what does it really need to to clarify the point that you're trying to make. So submitting only those uh, relevant photos um, will just make the negotiation process go smoother for you and for your adjuster, and it's going to be more money in your pocket, and you can get on to the next one and make more money there. I think um, one of the other things as a best practice may be if you're actually the person that's in the field taking the photos, to Jeff's point, take a ton of photos, right? But one of the things that we really liked um, for our contractors for as it relates to company cam is that you guys have the ability to allow the front office person to then vet the photos and then know which ones to submit which is super helpful or if the if it's the business owner the main contractor if it's somebody from his crew is taking all the photos and gets a wide range of photos then you know the contractor can then go in see the photos with the company cam tool and actually decide which one should be submitted pull those um you also had a question um how are these photos organized? If I have multiple people taking photos on the same job, how do they get organized in the system? So I, mm -hmm. do you want to address that now, Jeff, or do you want to put that on pause and see the demo? Um, I'll do a quick addressing of that, and then I've got two answers for that. Um, okay. If you if you go back to, you know, the, the process, so that's the, you know, the current process I talked about, you know, what, here, I'll just fly back to that, bear with me. So this one right here. So this is the current process that most people have. So it takes time. So how, how are they how are they organized? You tell me. <laughs> um, so a lot of that is just, you know, hey, I'm taking this picture. I know that um, that Luke is over at, you know, this job today and he sent me these photos. And so I'm going to put those in that folder. But I might also have photos from the job that Luke was at on Friday, which might not be the same thing. And I, I don't have anything to differentiate the two. So how are they organized? This when it's when it's in your business that is is totally um, up to you um, I think a lot of people just have this pain which is why this even why our company was born um, so I'll go back over here um, uh, but as far as, how for that. <laughs> yep, so as, as far as how they're organized here so this this photo right here is actually taken out of company cam I'll actually walk you through a demo of that here momentarily to show you how we actually organize them by uh, location by date by time and by the person that actually took the photo so um, yeah so the two questions how are they organized now um, that's totally up to you if you're if you're doing it manually uh, again I think that if you're running a successful business and you're showing profit you're probably better geared to spend your time elsewhere than organizing photos and probably the people that you have working for you have talents and skills and strengths that would better be lent to other areas of the business as well. So that's where, you know, with company cam, like we, we take all of that, we take that headache out of it for you. But, um, and I'll, I'll show you how exactly how that, how that works. So I love the questions. Thank you. Please keep them coming. Um, and if we can get to all of them on the call, marvelous. And if for some reason we don't, I, I I'm still glad to follow up with them via email or whatnot. So, uh, thank you very much for asking those. Any others there in the queue, Tiara? Not, not right now. Okay. All right. Very good. So, so why company cam? So I'm going to walk you through, you know, a few different things. You know, why, why company cam? Um, again, I, you could, you could really insert why, why a photo app or why an automated organization tool. I mean, really call, call it what you want. Um, of course. You know, I'm with Company Cam, and I haven't seen any anywhere out there that's doing it as well as we do it. We're not, you know, we're not, you know, doing any rocket science here. Um, it's a pretty simple app, but so so really, you can say why Company Cam or why any automated uh, organization system. So 
with this, with with Company Cam, you can manage any project from anywhere. So I'll show you this all live here in just a minute. But this is both, you know, the over on the right you've got an iPhone, so you get the the, the phone view, and then you've also got you know the web view. So if, if you're a contractor, you're out in the field, or you're an office administrator, and I take a photo, I'm out in the field. I take a photo on my phone. You as my boss, let's say I'm just let's say I, you know, work for one of you contractors that's on the call here. And um, and so I'm on a job, you're not on the same job. You're at a meeting, you're across town, you're on vacation, you're you're at a conference somewhere else. I take a photo and you can see that photo on your phone the second that I take it. If you are sitting at your desk as an office administrator and instead of um, having me come and dump 60 photos on your phone at the end or on your computer at the end of the day that you now get to sort out tomorrow whenever you have time um, I have never known any any project manager or office administrator that has extra time hanging out of their hands um, you can manage the projects you can see it as it's happening so if there's an issue that comes up you can go straight into it you can click on that photo you can see exactly what's going on the second that it happens and everybody's on the same page right now you can take smart photos. So this is a company cam function. So you can see who took it. So number one, Jared Loudy took this. He took it two days ago. So you can see who took it, when they took it. You can see where they took it because it's based on their GPS location. You can see what they're looking at in the photo. So on the on the app, you can um, annotate the photos really quickly. Actually, you can do it on your iPhone uh, through just the you know the the photo function but um, we can actually I'll show you how we actually do it a little bit faster than that and then um, the the fifth thing is you just have everything so the who what when where and, and and why basically so you've got all of these different things that are immediately available um, you can make quick annotations on there so that your whole team knows what's going on and saves you I, I had a, a guy this is not even a made-up story his his name is Woody I, I won't tell you his last name or his company but um, he started using company cam in October and I followed up with him the week after he got going on it. He has about 20 different guys using it. And like, I wish I would have had that call recorded because it was like a commercial that I wish we would have had captured because he was like going on and on. He's like, I bet you I've saved 20 or 30 phone calls just today because of this. I've saved myself time driving to and from these jobs because I don't have to go to them. Yeah. We all know that, Sometimes there's nothing that replaces actually being there and seeing it yourself. But when you can kind of triage what needs attention and what doesn't by, by being able to watch what's happening on your phone or on your computer, that saves a ton of time. Time is money. Go spend your time somewhere else. It makes more money. So it was just a, a blast uh, to, to hear that from him. So before and after photos, again, we talked about this when we we're talking about the five photos that every contractor must take. You take signs of that initial damage, that wear and tear, signs of failure, anything like that. What does this look like when you get to the job? Whether you're talking about a roof, uh, interior, uh, interior, you know, remodel, or maybe something exterior or commercially, like take photos of it. And then when you're done, you have a quick way to to do before and after. So you can do side by sides, but as you can see on this photo, even in the center, you can actually line it up with company cam, so it lines up perfectly with your initial shot. So before and after photos, being able to brand those with your company logo, throw those on Instagram, Facebook, throw them on your website. You got instant marketing with real stuff that you did. You didn't have to hire a marketing or a production crew to come out to capture this stuff. You did it with your smartphone, and then you're on to the next thing. Uh, minimizing liability. This is huge. We talked about this as well. So reasons to take photos. Covering your backside. You, you're out there working hard. Um, one thing is to you know be earning money. The other thing is to be protecting what you've already got. So minimizing liability. So let's say that you're being you show up at 1201 South 48th Street, and you're being blamed for this. Somebody backed into this wrought iron fence and bent the heck out of it. Somebody's blaming you for that. Well, if you can show that you were you know whether you were or weren't there, you know just kind of the the lay of the land. Um, you might save yourself from replacing this fence and if any of you have ever eaten a cost because you want to keep your customer satisfied this is a place where you can just be able to document what's going on show that hey you know what I'm, I'm really sorry about your fence 
I can assure you that it wasn't our team and here's how I can show you because you have date and timestamp photos of who's there, when they're there, and, and records nearly down to the minute of what was going on at that job as long as people are taking photos. So minimizes your liability and just kind of keeps everything transparent with your customer. You know, maybe you pitch in on it just to kind of be in good faith, but you can you can pretty much prove um, that it wasn't your responsibility. Um, safety practices. So if you're a roofer or you know if you've ever had an OSHA truck drive by your job site, um, being able to document some safety practices is a huge thing. Um, so showing that your guys are tied off with harnesses or anything like that, you can show. You know, be able to, you know, OSHA comes by and maybe questions you about something, you can pull this up. If you're a bigger contractor, this might be something that you experience on the regular. If you're a big company in your area, you've got a, probably a bigger target on your back because uh, people will know that, you know, you're more likely to pay. Otherwise, if it's just, hey, it's Jeff Balder's contracting service and I might be a two-man show and you want to come and find me five or ten grand, I may not have that, but if you're like a big time operation, uh, again, something the, the bigger you are, the, the, the harder you fall, um, you know, kind of keeping these things uh, in mind, being able to document all of your safety practices so that you can quickly quell any, uh, any questions or concerns that might come up around that. So <clears throat> um, I'll give a chance for any questions here. I'm going to, I'm going to minimize my screen here. Um, I'm going to move into uh, the demo mode of Company Cam, but uh, while I do that, are there any questions that I can field in the meantime? Um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, no questions so far, Jeff. I think this is really uh, engaging, really great information on um, how yeah, to utilize the tool. Hey. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> hey. So I'm in my house right now. Um, there was a fire two blocks from my office this morning, so um, it knocked out our internet at the office, so I had to stay at home. So I'm just going to be doing this from from the comfort of my living room. So bear with me here on that. Um, and I'm going to get this set up for you. One question while you're in. getting set up, Jeff. Yeah. Um, is, um, uh, the question is related to videoing. Um, as it relates, uh, you showed a lot of stuff about photos. Is there, does company cam or the tool offer the same type of resource, but with videos? Great question. So at this time, the answer is no, but the, the answer to that is also that we definitely want to. So, um, one thing with company cam and I'll jump into there. Um, so with company cam, all of our subscribers, um, uh, have, uh, unlimited access to every everything so uh, one of the ways that we're able to do that is we have just a, a monthly uh, fixed fee per user so it's twelve dollars a month per user now if you are you know 30 50 users like let's you know we can we can certainly talk about um, uh, some of the discounts that we have for that but for the most of our most of our businesses are going to be you know the, the the smaller operations and so um, with the photos, we've got about uh, 11, well, we're over 11,000. We're probably closer to 12 or 13 now uh, users on company cam. And um, one of the things that we're able to do is with photos, we can predict like within a reasonable amount, you know, how, how big a photo can possibly be. So we always compress the photos and we upload them to the cloud. So these are not actually saved on your phone um, when you take a photo through company cam. So what happens is, um, you know, being able to compress those, we know how big a photo can be. But as far as the video goes, you might take a 12-second video or you might take a 12-minute video. And for us to kind of keep our same simple pricing model and, and keep it low, um, we haven't yet found, struck a balance on how we can do that or if we go to like a tiered model where you, you know, you know, it's well, it's this much for this much storage. We sure. we we, right. we don't really want to do that, but at the same time, we've we're asked about video a lot, so it's something that we certainly want to do. It's just a matter of how do we offer video, keep the price where it's at, and and make sure that's you know still something that that fits into um, our customers' budget. So so right now the answer is no, we don't have video, but absolutely we would want to do that 
Um, there's, there's no video function or way to upload video into company cam at this point. Um, but it's, it's definitely something. Yeah. We want to, we want to, we want to say yes to that. But we also don't want to convolute our pricing structure because right now there's two things that we really strive for as a company that, that kind of lead every decision that we make. Um, as we look at building out additional features and functions, one of the questions that we have to ask is, will it still be simple? Because no matter how sexy a technology is, if it's not simple to where your people out in the field will pull their phone out and take a photo, if that's complicated and they don't want to do it, you're going to miss out on that visibility in your project. So we always, always, always lead with, is this going to keep this simple? Is it still going to be um, an easy thing for the users to pull this out of their, their pocket or their tool belt or their jacket, take the photos that we want them to take? So we want it to be simple, and we also want our pricing to be simple. So as I mentioned, everybody starts out with a trial. Um, it's 14 days if you go to companycam.com. For those of you that are on this webinar, if you are interested at the end of this um, in, in signing up for a, a trial of Company Cam, um, you will get 30 days instead of instead of uh, the 14 that you would get if you just went to our website. So, and there will be a link. Uh, we'll share that out here uh, so that you can get that. If you you know want this same demo for you or anybody else on your team, I'm glad to arrange that at a time that's convenient for you as well. So, again, thank you for the questions. But uh, at this time, uh, no video. But there's a, a tremendous amount of power in the simplicity of what I'm about to show you. So. Um, any others before I dive in? Nope, we're ready. Right. Okay, so so on my screen and, and just to confirm, you're, are you able to see over on the left is my iPhone? Yes. And then on the right is the web version of Company Cam. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, so what you're looking at, um, everybody here that's watching. So I've just got my phone connected to my computer. So that's over here on the left. So the, the simplicity, the instantaneous real-time syncing um, that you're going to see has nothing to do with the fact that my phone is connected to my computer. I could disconnect it and it would do the same thing. I could be you know, three states away and it would do the same thing. So um, being able to, to kind of show this is just I, I put them both on my screen so that you can kind of see both views. So this is over on the left, this is, this is your team out in the field. This is your sales guys, uh, your estimators, the people that are going out uh, having the first eyes on the project and then um, going from there uh, to to the people over here that might be maybe you're at at a at the desk uh, maybe you're the person that's fielding the calls when your customers call in and say hey like nobody's been here for three days and you can go in here and say oh actually yeah it looks like Alonzo was out there yesterday at 324 so you can show that that kind of stuff so um, I don't know that we'll have a, a time to go into the full uh, full demo, but I'll give you enough uh, information just on really the organization. And like I said, I'm always glad to set up a time, a training with you or your team um, if you're interested in giving this a go for yourself. So starting over on the left, uh, we'll kind of start with a phone. So this gray box right here that you see, this is from QuickTime Player on my Mac. This has nothing to do with company cam. It's just that when I hover over my phone on my computer, that shows up. That is not something that will show up for you. Um, I'll just try to kind of keep that out of the way a little bit, uh, but just bear with me on that. So as I as I want to, if I'm if I go to um, you know this this uh, arrow up here says company photos. I can also filter by nearby projects. I can go to project feed. So these are my existing projects. I can do the same thing on the web. I can click on project projects at the top, and I can see you know here's all the different projects I've got. Um, and so if I wanted to, any of these projects on my phone, if I wanted to jump into any of these projects, I can click into any one I want. So if I want to see what's happening at um, 13 North, North F Street in Lincoln, I can click on that and I can see the different photos that have been taken there. It looks like it was just uh, not, not an actual job. Um, here, Pella. There's a, a few other ones here. So these are all just photos that have been taken on my company's account. Um, and so we're actually demoing out of White Castle Roofing's account. White Castle Roofing is based here in Lincoln, Nebraska. 
Um, Lou Canson is our founder and CEO. He actually used to work for them. It's his, his family owns that. And so we just demo out of their account so you can actually see some real projects. So if I wanted to see what's happening at 173 Harwood Court, I could go click on that. Um, I can see, so right here, a lot of this is just the, the guys starting and ending their day. Um, rather than some of the actual projects. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but if I want, I can I can go in here and I can click on this, this red button at the bottom of my phone. I can add photos. I can start taking photos here, and I can do that. But what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll back out, and I can start a brand new project. I can click on Nearby Projects. So if I get out to a, a job, I can click on Nearby Projects. So these are actually roofs that, have, that White Castle has done in my neighborhood. So 15 weeks ago, they did 3125 C Street. So I can actually go through and see that they they did this house. And I can click on that. I can click on the camera at the bottom. I can see my nearby projects. These are just some demos that I've done from here. I can click on this new project. Let me move this guy out of the way. I click on new project. And immediately you can see it pulls up my address, pulls up my location. It pulls up my GPS, uh, GPS coordinates. And if I want to, if I'm like, yep, that's exactly where I am, I click create. These other red dots are other projects that have been created in this company cam account. So White Castle has done roof, uh, roofs around my neighborhood. I hit create, and I'll just do, uh, I'll just call this one Atlas, and I'll take a photo here. So I'm starting this project right here. And so I click into the Atlas project, and now you're seeing my home. So this is my living room. So here is my, I'll just take a fast cam. And you'll see these photos are gonna start popping in over here on the computer. So the second I take them, they pop in to the web. So they're automatically syncing the second that I take them. So you can see everything that I'm taking here. And then right now I'm in photos, so you're seeing it commingled with these other, other uh, photos. But if I click on projects, I can then just sort it just by that. So if I wanna just click on projects, Here's my Atlas project that I just created. It's that simple. But then if you see on my on my camera or on my phone over here, I'm in fast cam mode. So that just lets me pop pictures left and right. So just like you can with any other you know, photo on your camera, you can just take a bunch of quick pictures. But if I go into camera mode and I take a photo, so let's go here and I take a photo, it prompts me to edit that photo first. So if I click edit down here at the bottom, then I get this, this toolbar over here on the right, on the top, you know, top right. So I can change the color of my annotation. I can crop that photo. I can add some stickers. I can, if I click on this uh, little squiggly mark, I can, I can draw right on my photo. A little John Madden going on right there. I can add some text. So I can save that. And then just like a Snapchat, I can grab these two blue dots. I can move it around. I can change the shape, the size, all that good stuff. Um, I can add an arrow right here. So if I wanted to call something out, I can do that. So if I wanted to uh, point that out, and then I hit the text button right here that's connected to that arrow, I can type in guitar and save that. And so that now will move wherever I move it. So if I want to say fix this or you know curled shingles or you know we need to replace this vanity, you can you can make notes right on these photos so that when your production team gets out to do something. They can look back at the same exact pictures that you're taking and be able to um, know what you're talking about. Top left here, uh, there's a tag. I can add some tags so I can quickly go back in and filter um, my, my photos by that given tag. That blue dot indicates that there is a tag. Comments are super handy. So um, when I'm in the comments of a photo, I can put notes to myself. If I want, I can make a note to anybody else in my organization just by hitting the at symbol, so like social media style. And I can uh, type a message to Courtney. And if Courtney, let's say that I'm out on a job and Courtney's our, our project manager, I can say, Courtney, you know, is this in the bid? And she can see exactly what I'm looking at. When I hit save on this, she's going to get a notification to her phone or to her computer, depending on where that's at. Here's a photo I just took with the annotations. It's all right there. I can see the comments. I can even go right in here. So I don't want to get you sick on my, on my phone view here. But it, Courtney can come back in here and just type Jeff. She can scroll down to me. 
she can post that right back to me. And there I get, if you see on my phone, that notification just came through. If I tap on that, it takes me straight back into that conversation. Here's the photos. Here's my comments. It gives me immediate context. And those comments and those notes around that photo stay attached to that photo. So you're not digging back through text messages trying to find that photo and trying to figure out what the heck we were talking about and when. I got the date and time stamp down here at the bottom. Jeff Balder took this picture. So somebody had asked earlier, how do you organize them? <clears throat> so let's say that I've got seven people on my team that they're all at this project, they're all at this house, um, and they're all taking photos. I can see which photos came through and when, and who took them. So they'll automatically be correlated in the order that they were taken. So let's say, obviously these are all my photos, but if somebody from my team came and took a picture right in between when I took these two pictures, they'll be able to actually, uh, that their photo will show up right there as well. Um, one of the other uh, quick functions I wanna show you before uh, we get to the end, so I talked about those before and afters, documenting the first thing that you see, right? So this photo over here on, if I'm in this project, this photo, the very first one that I took, let's pretend that this is, you know, again, we're in my living room, apply this, imagine if you will, just a project that you're looking at, whether it's a, a bathroom that you're about to renovate, a roof that you're about to replace, siding, brick, landscaping, whatever it is. So I can go in here, this is the first photo that I took. Let's say that I took this photo two weeks ago. In the top right here, <coughs> there is a, a menu of three dots. When I choose the photo that I initially wanna take, I can then go up here, at the top and I can choose take an after photo. When I do that, you'll see that the initial photo that I took is kind of a ghost over what I'm looking through now. So if I wanted to, I can take that photo that I might have taken three weeks ago and I can, let's see, I can, I can line it up right here. I'm toggling a little bit of the visibility. So I can line this photo right back up with the original one that I took as close as I can. And boom, I can pop that photo. Now your photo will have um, your company logo is going to be branded on there. Your before and afters are going to show up over here. And then down here at the bottom, just like with uh, Instagram, you can kind of choose which filter you want, what makes your work pop, what makes it look great. And I can say, hey, this one looks good. I'm going to save this one. And I can share that straight to my customers. So this is what I was talking about. Those before and after photos are gold. So you already know that, I just saved it, and here it is, it's already over on my on my photo feed. I can see that there's a, a before and after tag automatically applied to it, and I can text that yeah. to somebody. So here, I'm gonna text this, Yara. What's cool about this too, Jeff, is that the front office person who's been begging for photos to share yep. on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, now they have the ability to have those at the at the drop of a hat so Absolutely. i think that that's awesome yeah, um so. and i just got your text so that's great um cool. are there any other questions about the demo we have we're right at 11 o'clock and we're happy to go back through some questions if there yeah. are any so go I ahead can, and type I those can, in the chat box yeah, i can i can stay on if there's other questions or anybody else wants to yeah. see anything else on yeah, sure, we can do that. So we have one request for um, somebody to show the text, how to add text to oh, a yeah. photo. Can you show that again? Absolutely. So what I'll do, I can go into any photo. Even I can annotate these even after the fact. So let's say I want to go into, um, you know, this photo over here. So if I take it, I can do it the second I take the photo, or if it's oh, cold out. Sorry. He was saying how to actually send the photo out via text. Oh, yep. So, um, so if I want to do again, I'll I'll take any of these photos. Um, I'll take uh, this one that I've annotated right here. So if I grab that photo, I can go up here to the top left or top right, excuse me, <laughs> um, top right, and I can um, choose this photo. I can share the photo. So third option down. So, so then, yeah. Yep. So I can email it again. I can, you know, I can uh, share that photo and then it just turns into all the functions that you have on your phone. Otherwise, so I can email that photo. 
I can put that on Instagram. Instagram. So if I want to throw yep. this on Instagram, I can write a caption and say, hey, look at the great work that we did at, at Tiara's house today. Um, you can text it to somebody. So you can share a single photo that way. Um, and then if I wanted to, I can also go up here in the top left. And let's say I wanted to select a handful of photos, right? So let's say I want to send Tiara, oh, I'm going to send her three of these photos because these just look good. I want her to see these things. She's at work right now. I'm on her roof or I'm at her house. I just got her house done. And I'm going to send her, send her these pictures so I can share this gallery to her. Tiara, you're going to get tons of texts from me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I can share this gallery and it's just going to be a link. So I can send her that link. And then I'll come back in here and I'll show you what this looks like. So what what it what happens is she's gonna get a link and and from her phone, she's at work, she's my customer, she clicks on this link and she sees what Jeff in, in White Castle just did at her house. And she's gonna be like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get home and see this. She yeah. just got excited about writing you a check. Yeah, that's what that's just great. Happened. So like so you're just you're telling the story of what's going on at, at their house, at their business. You know, some of you are probably doing commercial stuff. You can have these records to show them on the spot or after. Um, it's just a really cool way to to share out what you're doing. Um, yeah. There's, I can, so I can show Jeff, a couple of more, features. Two more, more, two more questions yeah. real yeah. quick. Um, the, do you review the cost um, of the, in the subscription fee as it stands yeah. today? And then also, um, someone else had a question about it being an app. So this is the actual app. Is it Android yep. as well as iPhone based? And yep. um, it, okay, perfect. So yep. you can use this on your Android as well as your iPhone. So no yep. matter who has what, you're still good there. And it's because it's an app also, it's gonna work no matter what, if you have internet access or not. So that's the other benefit of having that. That's great. Yeah, great, great call out. I'll show you how that works right now. I'm going to flip this into airplane mode. Okay, so I'm in airplane mode. So I have no Wi-Fi right now. I have no signal, period. Okay, and I'm at a, maybe I'm at a remote place. I want to take photos here, right. middle section. Take photos here. So I can go in here. I'm just going to take them of the window there. So that photo, I save that. So that photo is not over here. Right, so the photo is not happening on my computer, but if I go up here to my on my phone, there's a menu in the top left, this little hamburger menu with a red dot. That red dot's telling me something's going on. I tap on that; it shows my upload status as a, a something that needs to happen. So it's it's waiting to upload. That photo is date and time stamped already, but it's mm -hmm. waiting to upload. It's I'm I'm out of signal. I'm out in some remote area. And it's just not uploading. But as soon as I go in here and I turn airplane airplane mode off, now it's uploading. Boom, it's uploaded. It gives me the confirmation that I'm awesome, which I love. And then there's my photo that was taken at 10.04, and it's saved with the date and time yeah. stamp. That's great. And then the cost. Can you review the, the cost. cost one more yep. time? Absolutely. So everyone on here, um, on this on this call, everybody, everybody, period starts out with a free 14-day trial. Everyone gets a free 14-day trial. Even if you say, I love this, I wanna pay for this right now, we're still gonna give you the first 14 days free. For the people that will sit through this webinar and listen to me talk for an hour, um, we will give you 30, uh, 30 days for free. So you can sign up your team, um, you can get familiar with it, you can get kind of get through that learning curve, you can try it out for yourself, see if it's something that even works for you. Um, and if it is, awesome. After that, it becomes it's twelve dollars per month per user. So there is no contract. So a lot of contractors have seasonal. We're in Nebraska. It's thirty-five degrees out right now. It was sixty-one yesterday. Um, we have a very seasonal. You know, White Castle Roofing's account gets a lot less active in the winter months. So if you add people, your your team gets bigger for the summer months, the fall months. You add those people, you pay twelve bucks a month per user while they're on your account. And then afterwards, you can take them back off and you don't pay for them for the winter. So you can just have right. the, the essential pieces, the essential people on there. Um, and, if, and if we, by using this app the right way, which it's, it's not too complicated if they let me show you how to use it. Um, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're using this and you're not saving at least 12 bucks a month, think about what you pay 
your team that's on the roof or or at at these jobs if you're paying them 20 25 bucks an hour if we can save them 30 minutes a month this just paid for itself not to mention yep. you got full history immediate uploads everything is saved oh here so if i go here to my camera roll none of these photos are on my are actually on my camera roll they're all organized immediately to the nah. cloud yep yeah so Great. um yeah any other questions I'll, I'll hang on here if, if any if people need to go of course drop but if i'll hang on here if there's more questions i've got time i'm just missing our, our team meeting which i love missing so no. <laughs> <laughs> well I, um you do have a couple more questions let me do this though um let me um jeff if you don't mind going to the next slide just to put up the yeah. contact information i think the people in the call probably are going to want to see that um this is just information here of course you all know how to contact me and we also will be sending out a webinar um question right after um questionnaire to get your input and also to get some ideas on what you'd like to see here um next so thank you guys for jumping on if for those of you who are interested in staying on for a couple of additional questions, feel free. And for those of you that um, have gotten the information that you need, feel free to contact Jeff or myself with any additional questions. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. Jeff, you did have another question that said, if I have a subcontractor working for me and they have the app, can they connect with my company? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll, um, should I take this this down? I'll show you how that show you how that works. This will all get shared out. Um, if you're on the call here, companycam.com, make sure you put forward slash yep. Jeff. That'll take you to my landing page where you can get 30 days instead of 14. Um, or you can just email me and connect with me that way, Jeff at Company Cam, super simple. Um, and then, of course, uh, both of our, our contacts will be on here. Um, this will be, Tiara, safe to say that you're sharing this out after? Yeah, we okay. will certainly cool. do that. We'll share cool. it out. Um, so, yeah, please shoot me a note on that if you want more information. Um, but I'll jump into uh, the question on on the subcontractor. So um, so we've got a few different user types. So if I go in here to users, so I'm on the web here. I just clicked at the very top. So these are all the users in White Castle Roofing. But if I want to create a new user, I can go into here. I create their first, last name, email address, phone number, and so on and so forth. I can go in and I can uh, create three different types of users. Well, four really admin is standard so so we have admin just everything is turned on for you everything is turned on and of course you as the business owner are probably you want to use discretion if you give anybody else administrative access as soon as I change to standard it's going to go and change just a few settings to where they cannot delete or or manage the company building I don't want them having access to my credit card or anything like that so you turn all those things off so these are just some of the the ones that we've already got created for you and then restricted access shuts everything down except access to the mobile app so you can create a user for your subcontractors if there's somebody that does regular work for you um, you can also create a custom role so if I click custom everything is off and then you turn on what you find that you want them to have access to and if you have questions on what does that mean there's just a, a few little quick blurbs I'm also glad to walk you through that on an individual basis so you can change any of those. You got their contact information created up here, and then you come down to the bottom and you create that user, and then they have that access unless you change it. Um, one of the there is an option though if you just have kind of the one off um, one off user that maybe you just hire the sub for this one project that you don't really need to have their own account yet. So I can go into this Atlas project here. There's a manage and share button on my project now this is on the web only that i can access this but i can go in here and i can manage guest users so i can actually click on this and i can create there's this is rick he's our mascot um, so i can add a guest user so i can type an email to find or create a guest user so if i wanted to you know type in i, I won't type anything in here because we're actually in company or uh, white castle's account but I can create a guest user right here just by typing in uh, an email. They will not have access to everything. All they will be able to do is upload photos into my project. That's all that they can do. 
So managing guest users. Guest users don't cost you anything. Um, you can you can add a guest user to a project totally free, but um, let it be known that like their their access is extremely lim limited, so they can't see all your other projects. Great. Okay. And then <laughs> one other thing. Um, and we'll probably, Chris, we'll probably just follow up with you directly on walking through. Um, but the question was about um, what next steps. Is is there levels? So during the trial account, is there th certain things you can or cannot access, or is it no. unlimited no matter what kind of account you have? You, if you sign up, you have all the same access today that you would if you were paying us 12 bucks a month per user. Okay, great. So, yeah. Awesome. So, so it, it just makes it really simple. And if you fall in love with company cam and you're like, okay, I just, I know I want this. You can enter in your credit card at any point, um, even during your trial. And it will not be, uh, it will not be charged until your trial is over. But okay. again, if you have questions, let me know on that link. So companycam.com forward slash Jeff. Actually, let me just show you where that takes you. And I just, and I just check, text it out to everybody who's still on the call. Oh, so awesome. you guys should see check your chat box. You'll see all of Jeff's contact in there as well, Perfect. and then we'll send it out via email afterwards. Yeah. So there. So a few things. You can schedule this demo. You can scroll down and and click right here. I'm actually out Wednesday, Thursday. But if you say, hey, you know what? I want I want Jeff to walk my team through this. You can click on here. You can find the time that works for you. If it's available on here, it's available to you because um, other commitments are taken off my calendar when they're booked. Um, and then uh, you can, you know, get a quick overview of it here, a uh, little bit of information there, and then you can sign up for your trial right through here. So, again, um, let me know how I can help. I mean, this is fun to me. Like, I love showing this. Um, it's simple. Like I said, it's super simple, but it's extremely powerful. Great. That, so. that is awesome. And we highly encourage you all to test out company cam, give it, give the 30 day trial a test and see how it works for your business. Let us know if we can help. And um, Jeff, thank you so much for your time on this call. And um, if there's no other questions in the chat, then we will sign out. Awesome. Thank you everyone who's hanging out uh, this long. I appreciate it. Hopefully this is valuable to uh, you. Yeah, this has been great. Um, awesome. One more question. Um, yeah. If you don't take a picture from the app, can you upload photos that you took? You bet. You bet. So I'll go in here. So if I want to add, let's say I took a photo on my phone and I forgot to open up company cam first. So down here in the bottom, this little plus button, which is the same thing I would do to add photos. I can also add photos from my device. So right here, I can click on this and I can go. This was the scene here in Lincoln, which is why I'm in my my mm -hmm. living room so I just added that photo from my device it, it's not as instantaneous it'll take just a few seconds but once that's in here so if I refresh yeah. hopefully it's is, that right same, is that same availability available on your computer as well I'm assuming yep yeah. yeah. so right here okay. if I wanted to so let's say I'm in this project so I took this this photo 8 37 a.m. this is on the way downtown this, there's a fire up here that's bad news um, but our office is like right down this street, like we're like we're a block away from that. So, um, so you can see that I took that photo on my phone and then uploaded it. But there's my date and timestamp; it's all still there. Um, and then from the computer, I just go into the project that I want to be in, and then over here on the right, there's the Add Photos option. So I can go in here, I can drag and drop, or I can click to upload them from wherever they might be on my on my computer. So uh, let's see. I don't know if it's probably got some photos somewhere over here. I don't have a whole lot of photos on here, but oh, there's some. Yeah, so I can upload this photo. My friend's my friend's baby that I was hanging out with yesterday. So that'll upload. So I just love uploaded that for my my uh, computer. Awesome. And then that'll show up. So here. Yeah, and so that answers a lot of the drone questions too that that may have come yeah. in. If you have a drone. Absolutely. If you have the photo, you can still use the tool by taking the photo and uploading it using like Jeff just showed. So yep. great, great question. Awesome. Yeah, great call out too. Yeah. Yeah, take your drone picks up there from the sky and 
drop them in here and they'll be in the same order that they were taken. Yeah, you bet. All right. Well, thank you again, Jeff. And we are signing off. So thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Have a marvelous day.